the instructions for this quilt and everything you need is on this sheet. Delectable Mountains was part of Block of the Day in 2023. It was 0927, which is September 27th. So if you want to see that block video, there will be a link in the description below this video. There's also a link to download these instructions. Here are the blocks and the test blocks I made from the block of the day video. If you have 10 inch squares, or sometimes we call those layer cakes, if you have one 10 inch square of the light fabric and one 10 inch square of the accent fabric, you can make these two blocks and they're mirror images of each other. I call this block a right peak because if these are mountains, this is the peak and this is the valley. And so we have the peak on the right hand side. And likewise, this is the left peak because the peak is on the left hand side. And this will come into play when we're laying out the quilt blocks. I cut these blocks from a collection called Creativity Roars from Moda Fabrics. So after I finished the video on Delectable Mountains, I decided I wanted to make this quilt. So I cut 36 squares from the collection. To cut the squares, I used the Creative Grids Perfect 10 ruler. It cuts a 10 inch square and it has a nice diagonal line that we're going to use later. If you have AccuQuilt, the Go Big electric cutter, you can use this die 55451 to cut your 10 inch squares. And there'll be links for both of these in the description below the video. So once I cut all of my accent squares, my 36 total accent squares, then it was time to cut the background fabrics and I'm using low volume prints. So I cut 36 of those with the same ruler. One of the things I want to show you in this video is if you don't want this size quilt, you want to make it smaller or larger, whatever you want, all you need to know is how big you want it in the first place. You'll have to decide that. Then you'll need the finished size of the block. And for our block here, the finished size is seven and a half inch wide by nine inches tall. That's all we'll need for this. You'll go to my website and click on quilting apps right there. You click on that and this this page will pop up. It's quilting calculators. There are two calculators on this page but we're just going to look at the first one today. It's called sizing a quilt and for sizing this quilt you'll need to know the finished size of your block. So in the first line you're going to fill out the finished size of the block. The width is seven and a half and the height is nine. So we'll put those numbers in there. And then we have to sort of guess at how many blocks we want to put across and how many blocks go down. So this would be four blocks in each row and there will be four rows. We're just going to test it out and see how big this makes it. Let's say we want to make a 45 inch by 60 inch quilt, roughly that size. We're not going to put a sash in or a border, so we'll just leave that blank right now. And come down here and press calculate. And it fills out the quilt width and the quilt length. So if I have four blocks across and four blocks down, the quilt will be 28 inches by 36 inches. Well, that's not enough. We don't want that. So let's go back up here and change the blocks across. Let's put eight blocks across and let's put seven blocks down. Remember, this block is longer than it is wide. Let's put seven in this place. Then we'll go down here and we'll have to hit the calculate button again. And now that, that gives me 56 inches wide by 63 inches long. So the 63, I think I'll keep that number, but the 56 is just slightly too large. So let's go up here and change this eight for the blocks across to a seven. Seven. And then we'll go down and calculate again. So now we have a quilt that's 49 inches by 63 inches. So I think I'll go with that. Now you'll need to write down some of this information. Here's my little sheet. The blocks across, so we're going to do seven 
by seven. Seven blocks across and seven blocks down. And you'll look down here and the quilt width is 49 inches, so that makes it 49 by 63 is our finished size quilt. Then we'll look on the next line, it gives you the total number of blocks you'll need. So you'll need 49 blocks, so we'll write that down. And this also gives you the number of binding strips you'll need and the yardage for your binding. You know what size the quilt is going to be, so you can write this number down. You'll need six strips at two and a half inches for the binding, and that is roughly about a half a yard. So you can write that down. Now this will tell you how many blocks you need for this size. So in our case, we need 49 blocks. Now let's figure out how much fabric we need. To figure out how much fabric we need for this one, we're using pre-cuts. So we're using the 10 inch squares. And we know that to make two blocks, you need two 10 inch squares. Now let's figure out how many 10 inch squares we need to make this quilt that we just calculated. We need 49 blocks, but I'm going to round that up to 50, an even number, because we always get an even number when we piece these. And we know that a light square and a dark square makes these two blocks. So if we take the 50 blocks we need and divide it by two, that gives us 25. So we'll need to have 25 light squares and 25 dark squares to make this quilt with 49 blocks and you'll have one block extra. What you're going to do is take the number of blocks you need and divide it by two. Let's say you needed 64 blocks. So divide this by two and it's 32. So you'll need 32 lights and 32 darks. That's how you figure out the yardage for the size quilt you need to make this delectable mountain quilt. Once the squares are cut, you take the lighter fabrics and you're going to draw a diagonal line. For this, I used a Creative Grids two and a half inch by 18 and a half inch ruler to get across the diagonal. So draw diagonal lines on all the backs of all of the background fabrics. Match a light fabric with an accent fabric. From right sides together. Stitch a scant quarter inch on each side of this diagonal line. You'll have two rows of stitching. My presser foot has a little metal guide. If I put that guide right on this line, it gives me a true quarter inch. But I'm going to put the guide just to the right of this drawn line and stitch my scant quarter inch on this side, then flip it around and do the same thing on this side. Sew all of your pairs together like that. Using the same ruler I drew the diagonal line with, I'm going to cut on the diagonal line. And you'll have two half square triangles. They should be roughly nine and a half inches. Press the seams open and then trim them down to nine and a half inches. Now using the same Perfect 10 ruler that we use to cut the squares, trim these down to nine and a half inches. Place the diagonal line on the ruler along the seam line. Down here, the nine and a half inch mark is enough to trim off, so I'll need to move this up some more. We need to make sure that we have enough to trim off on all four sides. And make sure this point is right down the middle of these two fabric. Trim these two. And flip this around. Place the nine and a half inch mark here and here and line up the seam line here. And make sure that this point goes right between the two different fabrics. And then trim these two sides. And we'll do that for all of the half square triangles. Step four through seven, take each of the half square triangles and cut them into four equal pieces. So steps four and five will cut with the triangle facing this way, and step six and seven with the triangle facing this way. This is for steps four and five. We have our half square triangle with the accent fabric here. So we'll put this to the side, take our regular ruler, 
and cut it into four equal pieces. So if we've trimmed this down to nine and a half inches, each piece will be cut at two and three eighths. If you pay attention to the lines on your ruler, it's very easy to do. We'll take our ruler and place it with a two and three eighth inch mark along this edge. So here I've zoomed in. This is the two inch mark and we count one, two, three. And that's your 3 8 inch. If you can place that 3 8 inch mark along two spots along this edge, then you know your cut will be right. So we'll cut this. Now we're going to reverse these stacks. This is our peak. So we'll take the second one and move it over. And this one and move it over. And this one, move it over here. This is our right peak, and this is the valley over here. Sew these together. Now for step six, do the same thing. Cut two and three eighth inch segments. Now we're going to rearrange these as well. So we'll pick this up, bring it over here, the next one, in the next one. This is a left peak. Sew these together. Here's the right side. And here are the two blocks you get from two 10 inch squares. Sometimes they'll go together like this. Sometimes they'll go together like this. It just depends on which design you've chosen. And plus you can always mix this up with something else. Put this one here and you'll have a different look. Now we'll go ahead and do all the rest of our pairs. we've made all of our blocks. Everything's sewn and pressed. What we're going to do next is lay out the blocks how we want to sew them together. The scrappy layout I have chosen. If you look at the top row, 
we have a right-facing peak and a left peak. Right, left, right, left, all the way down. And we'll put those together like that. The second row and all the even rows, it's the same thing, a right peak and a left peak. And repeat that all the way down. Only with the even number rows, we're going to rotate the blocks. The blocks will be all mixed up. They won't be the same colors together, but I'll just show you to demonstrate this. So here's the right peak and the left peak, and you repeat this across the odd number rows. And then if we take the another right peak and left peak like this, but we take these and rotate them like this, so the top goes on the bottom. And this is the design we want. We want this sort of zigzag design to go all the way across. Now at the same time, we want to kind of mix these up and pre-mix pre them just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take my entire stack and I'm going to put the left peaks on one stack and the right peaks in another stack. So we just go through and do all of these and separate them out like this. So this one stack, it doesn't matter which one, just choose a stack and we're going to leave it exactly like this. This other stack, in my case this is the left peaks, we're going to shuffle them up a little bit because as we lay them out we don't want the same fabrics to be next to each other. So I just grab a few pieces and sort of just shuffle them like this. Put them back and then grab some more and I'm just grabbing a little bit at a time and shuffling them around. So it just gives you a, a little bit of a shuffle so you don't have to do so much shuffling once you have it on the design wall. Okay, we're gonna go with that. When we look down at the bottom, these this top one are the odd numbered rows. So one, three, five, seven. And we're going to take a right peak and a left peak and then alternate those. So we'll take from the right stack first and then the, the left stack and we'll make, we'll have eight total blocks. So here's the right and the left, that's one, two, three, and four. Now this is our row number one and we can put this on the design wall now. Now we're going to pick for row two. So we'll take a right and a left and do that four times the same way. That's two, that's three, and I don't like this, I'm gonna put that different, four. Now what we wanna do here is take this top one and flip it like this. So that's going to be the first one. Then we'll flip this one and go and flip all of these. And you can do this when you're at the design wall. You don't have to do it here. I'm just doing it to show you. So all the way down, we'll flip them. So now the light parts are making the, the mountains here. Then we'll put this one on the design wall. Now you're just going to simply repeat that process. Do your odd row first, where you don't rotate the blocks, and do the even row next when you rotate the blocks. And you keep doing that till you have nine rows down. And as you're putting them up on the design wall, and then as you stand back and look at them, then, then rearrange the blocks if you don't like two fabrics next to each other or however. Make sure it looks nice to you before you sew your blocks together. To see how I take the quilt blocks from the design wall to the finished quilt top, check out the video, Organizing Blocks with Number Charms. Click on the link above to see the video.
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.